Hey guys, my name is Jeremy Kell 7 ec I'm a solo content creator in the state of Alaska. Uh, ham radio, portable operations with a program called POTA, or Parks on the Air. Uh, if this is your first time visiting the channel, please think about hitting that subscribe button and follow me on all of my Alaska adventures. All right, are you guys ready? I'm not so much on this one, but let's go. So back a few months ago, uh, at the beginning of June, uh, me and my family set up just right here, um, right around the corner here, um, pulled up our camper, um, doing some portable operations. I set up the uh, Buddy Hex by Buddy Pole on the 33 foot Massworks tripod. Uh, had it fully extended. Um, it was a beautiful day and uh, making some contacts. Uh, and then afterwards I wanted to do some, you know, get some nice aerial footage of the lake in behind me hovering up above the hex beam. Yeah, just get some nice aerial shots. So the drone I'm using is a DJI Air 30. Um, it was purchased probably about 10 months ago. Yeah, about 10 months ago. Um, I had a, you know, a few hours flying it. Before then, I had a Mini, uh, a Mini 2. And then before that, I had the uh, Phantom 4 Pro. Um, so, you know, I could... I know my way a little bit around drones and, and flying and things. Um, but what really impressed me with the Air 3 is its amazing features uh, that it has. Um, unlike, you know, the, the bigger drones, the Maverick and things of that nature. Uh, this had all those same features packed in into a smaller frame. So got it out, started flying. Um, I've done some nice aerial shots of the hex beam. And I was kind of in between two trees under the canopy. And there was probably, I don't know, I would say 40 feet or so in between the canopy of the two trees. And I was dead smack in the middle. Then I got the idea. I was like, okay, well, I'll just get a nice uh, beaming shot and nice aerial overview um, of the lake at full speed. Now, this drone is extremely fast. Um, it'll do something like 47 miles per hour uh, very quickly too. So as soon as you hit that joystick within seconds. So I was right in the middle of, in between those two trees. I took off and then bam, right into the tree. Oh my gosh, you're talking about one of those feelings way deep down in your gut where you just crashed a $1,500 drone. Um, I couldn't believe it. I could not believe it. So I'm at a point where, like I said, this was beginning in June. This is now, uh, we're in August and I didn't know if I wanted to make the video. Do I make the video of me crashing the drone? Or do I even put it out there? And the more I got to thinking about it, I was like, yeah, I probably should. Just so somebody else wouldn't make the same mistake that I did. Now, with all that being said, let's talk about the Air 3 for a second. It's a very smart drone. Um the sophistication behind the drone is incredible. Um, it has the ability to see behind it, uh, to see above it, to see below it, to see in front of it. Uh, so pretty much there's a 360 degree uh, bubble, if you will, around the drone. If you get too close to an object, it will alert you. Um, if you avoid that alert and keep going, the drone will stop. It will not run into any obstacles. That's what it was designed for. Uh, it's called obstacle avoidance for a reason. It will not run into anything. So what happened? Why was I able 
to clip the top of the tree as I was going out. So with that being said, how can a drone so sophisticated, so smart, with all the technology surrounding that drone, how was I able to crash it? To help with this investigation, I've hired some outside help. Um, please meet Junior. Okay, my name is Junior, and I'm an agent with the NTSB. Dude, you are not an NTSB agent. Hey, you conjured me up. I'll be whoever I want to be. All right. First questions first. Are you coming or going? What do you mean am I coming or going? The hat. Turn backwards. Are hat. you coming or are you going? All right. If you don't hurry up, you're going to be going. All right. Threatening an NTSB agent. Threatening an NTSB agent. Hey, Bubba, how about him? This is your show, the NTSB agent. You know what? Just go. So the question is, what happened? Now, I know exactly what happened. I know exactly what I did. Uh, you can call it pilot error or sim simple stupidity. <laughs> That's pretty much it. So as I was under that tree, I wanted to uh, just go to the north of the lake here and do just a fast bypass over the lake. Um, what got me was impatience. Um, pilot error. But what prompted to that was me being impatient. So what I did, and what you've probably heard a million times before not to do, is take it out of either cinematic mode or normal mode and put it into sport mode. What sport mode does, it bypasses all of the obstacle avoidance, all those safety features that you paid a lot of money for so you don't crash your drone, it bypasses that. So as I was coming out of the canopy, before I even knew it, it uh, I mean, I, ju I just hit the gas. Before I could even react, I seen it head right towards the tree. I tried to stop it, tried to slow it down. There was, the, it was too late. The thing was already up full speed, uh, 47 miles an hour, clipped the top of the tree. Why was I so impatient? Why? I mean, I just wanted to get the aerial view, but I didn't want to wait uh, to clear the canopy of the trees to go out and then come back and do the, the flyby. At that point, I would have been high enough above the canopy, nothing around to no obstructions around the drone. Then I could have put it in the sport mode and then the fast flyby. So lesson learned, <laughs> never, ever, ever take the drone and put it in the sport mode. I'm still beating myself up about it. So now, and, uh, I declined the insurance that the DJI has, which I would not recommend to do. Um, but yeah, so now I have a drone that's got a uh, broken front limb and the gimbal bracket is just, uh, the gimbal itself is okay. It's just the bracket and behind it, um, it just tore, tore that all the pieces. Um, I didn't have the video going of when I actually crashed a drone. I did have a video after the fact, uh, so here it is. Uh. Uh. Dag gum it. So huge lesson learned, um, me personally, it doesn't matter if I'm 200 feet high with nothing around, I will never ever put the drone back into sport mode. 
Um, it's just not worth it. That impatient cost me the downtime of the drone and the money to fix it, um, which I don't know how much it's all going to be um, at the moment, but um, uh, I'll, I'll let you guys know. I appreciate you guys watching and taking part of my heartache. I sure do appreciate it. Until next time, 7-3. Dude, I can still see you.